About 71% of the Earth's surface is called water. Yeah, it's not for nothing that our home is known as the Blue Planet. But where does the water come from? A seemingly common question, but it will startle most of us because we don't know. The answer to that is a bit tricky, because it depends on your beliefs about how the universe came into being. By that I mean if you believe in creationism or the belief that there is a god or gods that created the world and universe, then the answer would be no. But the waters came quickly after the formation of the world. However, for those who believe in the Big Bang, then it's very logical to understand how the world was not born with water, because the explosion of energy that created our solar system and put everything in its place and orbit would not have created water. In this view, the water we know today might not have existed back then. So the question arises, where did all this water come from? It's unlikely it just popped into existence. Since our planet is about two-thirds water, it must have accumulated over an extremely long time, perhaps billions of years. Some scientists even suggest that life has existed in water for billions of years, and there's a possibility life started in the water rather than on land. So if it's true that water wasn't just born on Earth, then it had to have been created on the planet or infused on the planet by some outside force. On that account, scientists do agree that over the course of millions and billions of years that meteors, comets, and asteroids hit the Earth, and when they did, they infused the ground with water add numerous rocks crashing down over the years and millennia and epochs and all that and you get a large body of water. I'm sure this somehow seems far-fetched. I would even go so far as to say that some of you didn't know that asteroids and the like carried water with them, but they do and we do know that they helped bring some of the water to Earth. How so? Isotopes. Specifically, the isotope of hydrogen. Even more specifically than that, the version of hydrogen isotope known as deuterium. The Earth's water has a certain concentration of deuterium, and that concentration matches the waters that have been found and studied in asteroids and comets. But wait, there's a catch. While much of the Earth's waters seem to have been carried by asteroids, there are a few inconsistencies, and so many scientists are actually debating whether the asteroid or comet theory is fully accurate. Seriously though, the question of why the asteroid theory doesn't work is an important one, mainly because the asteroid theory works as a plausible method for how the water on Earth came to be, with the exception of one question. How is it that the Earth was hit by so many asteroids, comets, and such, to where two-thirds of it were covered by water? No, really, think about it. The Earth isn't just covered in water. It's covered in water that is tens of thousands of feet deep. One of the deepest points in the ocean is the Mariana Trench at over 36,000 feet in depth, and it really does keep going on from there. So, add that depth to seven oceans in numerous lakes, rivers, and more, and you get a whole lot of water. So how is it possible that there were enough meteors asteroids, comets, and more hitting the Earth in the beginning part of the universe that it would cause that much water to be made. It doesn't add up for a lot of scientists. Now again, there's no denying that some asteroid water was brought to Earth. The isotopes prove that. But what some scientists apparently choose to ignore is that the levels aren't always so balanced, and they don't make up for the inconsistencies noticed in that isotope across the world meaning that while asteroid water is part of what made our watery planet, it's not the only thing. And that is a very important distinction. So what did create the rest of the Earth's water, if not asteroids and comets? The Solar Nebula The other main theory behind where much of the water on Earth came from is based on the theory of the Solar Nebula. What is that, you ask? Well, to put it simply, it's the belief that the birth of our solar system infused the planets with a special cloud of particles, and that cloud 
help shape and define the Earth as we know it right now. Is that a little vague for you? No worries. Let's rewind back to the Big Bang, okay? So in short, when our fraction of the galaxy was made, or more specifically, when our solar system was made, our sun was born. But it wasn't necessarily a boom and it appeared kind of moment. It was a formation of lots of gases that turned our sun into what it is now. But there was a lot of leftovers in terms of the gases that helped create it. And that cloud of gases and particles was known as the solar nebula. It was so big that it enveloped our entire solar system to the extent that it reached from Mercury to Pluto. Why does that matter? Simple. A lot of gases that were in that cloud were ones that are the building blocks of worlds, including hydrogen. To be clear, the gas itself was harmless. It wasn't going to threaten the worlds, just the opposite. As the gases from the solar nebula got absorbed by the various planets, including Earth, they started to better form into what they are now. This is why the outer planets have ice and not water, because they are too far away from the sun to melt. Meanwhile, the closer planets had the ability to melt, but the closer they were to the planet, like Mercury or Venus, they would burn too much and sometimes completely evaporate. So how does that figure into the Earth? Because of our position in the Sun, the literal Goldilocks position where it was not too hot or too cold, the hydrogen and other gases from the solar nebula got absorbed into our planet's mantle. This allowed it to not just grow the Earth, but help form water inside of it, thus helping grow the water for the Earth, even if we couldn't see it at the time. This particular theory has many scientists excited because it fills in the holes of the comet asteroid theory. Can we prove the solar nebula theory? Hearing some of this theory about the solar nebula and all the assumptions it makes about the beginnings of our solar system, I'm sure it seems as though this is an impossible theory. Or at the very least, impossible to prove. But you would actually be wrong in that estimation. You see, there are some scientists who have found traces of water from deep within the Earth that don't have the heavy water hydrogen isotope levels as the comet asteroid water. And given how deep they are within the Earth, it means they were there long before some of the asteroids came down, which means that the Earth must have made its own, mainly via the solar nebula process. But there's another twist in this story. Water on the Moon? The Moon has been above our heads for a very, very long time. But one of the reasons most people don't think it's a place we can colonize is because of the fact that the Moon has no water. But that's not quite true. There have been recent tests on the Moon that have shown that there is water on it in trace amounts. Not enough to live off of, but enough to show you that it's there. What's important about this is the fact that the water traces that have been found on the Moon have similar isotope traces to the kind of water found in the mantle of the Earth, meaning the solar nebula water. This is important because the Moon has long been believed to be a chunk of the Earth itself that was blasted into space via the collision of an asteroid based on samples of the surface of the Moon and seeing how closely it compares to Earth dirt and such. So, if the Moon has water that doesn't have the same concentration of hydrogen isotopes the majority of the Earth does from when the asteroids literally rained down, then wouldn't that mean Earth had some water to begin with because of the solar nebula? Yeah, when it comes to proving exactly what levels of water were created by either, yeah, we can't really prove that. And for a very basic reason, we weren't there when the Earth was formed, not even close. In fact, we are so far from when the Earth was created that we could be missing a very key piece to the equation that made up the water on Earth. That's one of the biggest problems of trying to figure out the creation of the universe as a whole. We have to guess on a lot of things, such as with the asteroids that have hit Earth since its creation, or how much hydrogen may have been in the solar nebula when it got absorbed by the Earth, and so on and so forth. The study of the beginning of our world is easily one of the ones that has a lot of guesswork, and most scientists agree that while they might just get closer to what the answer is, there's no way of knowing what the real answer is.